Hello there. Today I want to talk to you about getting up off the ground using the sky. Ooh. But first, uh, reminding you that on Thursday night, New Year's Eve, we're doing a New Year's Eve thing at ACZC.org starting at 8 p.m. Pacific time and going through midnight. We're going to mostly sit Zazen together on the Zooms. And I will give a talk at uh, around 9.10, I think, 9.010, 10 after 9. Uh, that uh, will be about something I haven't quite decided, probably something to do with Dogen's various New Year's speeches that he gave back in the days when he was giving New Year's speeches. So, the reason I picked this topic of getting up off the ground by using the sky is because Dave at the Angel City Zen Center mentioned it in an email to me and said he might want to do a talk about it, and I don't want to, like... I don't know, steal his thunder and do a talk about it first because I don't consider these little 10 minute videos the equivalent of like an hour long talk about something. But I just thought that's an interesting topic and uh, maybe I can make a video out of it and maybe Dave, if you're watching, this might help you out in your research in doing a talk about this thing. So it is part of Inmo, which is, as regular viewers know, one of my fave chapters of Dogen's work. It is um, means it in Chinese or something or sometimes it's translated as suchness or thusness or something fancy like that but it's really it's more like something. It's more like a, a thing you can't name and most of my book uh, there is no God and he is always with you was about Inmo in some tangential way and a lot of my book, It Came From Beyond Zen, was about Inmo, uh, including one chapter specifically about Inmo. So uh, the specific section that Dave was talking about goes like this in the Nishijima Cross version. So let's read it together. Uh, the time of falling on the ground we understand as is. And in the Nishijima Cross version, he uh, they put a little asterisk marks or a little cross mark to indicate places where they've translated the word inmo. So is, in this case, is a translation of the word inmo. So inmo has a lot of meanings. Uh, the time of falling on the ground we understand as it is, uh, as it is, as it, inmo. Uh, and at the very moment, and very is also inmo, when we get up, inevitably relying on the ground, we do not wonder that the falling down was on the ground. There are words that have been spoken since ancient times, have been spoken f from the western heavens, that's India, and have been spoken from the heavens above. They are, if we fall down on the ground, we get up again on the ground. If we seek to get up apart from the ground, that is, in the end, impossible. In other words, those who fall down on the ground inevitably get up on the ground, and if they want to get up without relying on the ground, they can never do so at all. Taking up what is described thus, we have seen it as the beginning of attainment of great realization, and we have made it into the state of truth that sheds body and mind. Therefore, if someone asks, what is the principle of the Buddha's realization of the truth, we say it is like someone who falls on the ground getting up on the ground. Mastering this principle, we should penetrate and clarify the past, we should penetrate and clarify the future, and we should penetrate and clarify the very moment of the present. And very, again, is a translation of inmo. Great realization and non-realization, returning to delusion and losing the state of delusion, being restricted by realization itself and being restricted by delusion itself, each of these is the truth that someone who falls to the ground gets up relying on the ground. It is an expression of the truth in the heavens above and everywhere under the heavens is an expression of the truth in the western heavens and the eastern lands, that's India and Japan, or China could be the eastern lands too, uh, is an expression of the truth in the past, present, and future, and is an expression of the truth of old Buddhas and new Buddhas. So he's really laying it on thick, like this is a good expression. This expression of the truth is never imperfect in, in expression and it does not lack anything in expression. So, put the nail on that one. Even so, this is typical Dogen, he's going to turn it around on us. It seems to me that the only way to understand the words like that, that again being emo, with 
without also understanding them in a way which is not like that, and again, in Mo, is to fail to master these words. So you have to understand them in a way that's like that and a way that is completely unlike that. Uh, Ziggy is barking at the guys working on trees next door, by the way, in case you wondered. Although the expression of the truth of an eternal Buddha has been transmitted like that, again, yeah, that is Inmo, still, when eternal Buddha listens as eternal Buddha to the words of the eternal Buddha, there should be an ascendant state of listening. Though never spoken in the western heavens, aka India, and never spoken in the heavens above, there is another truth to be expressed. It is that if those who fall down on the ground seek to get up by relying on the ground, even if they spend countless kalpas, which are immeasurably long times, they will never be able to get up. They can get up by means of just one vigorous path. That is, those who fall down through reliance on the ground inevitably get up relying on the void. Void is the translation that Nishijima and Cross use here. Uh, the, the word they're translating is, is pronounced ku or sora. When it's pronounced ku, it means emptiness or void. And when it's pronounced sora, it means sky. I think the metaphor is better served by translating the word as getting up relying on the sky, because sky and ground are a pair. But sky in English doesn't have that double meaning of void or emptiness. So I think that's why they chose to, to say void. Uh, but anybody reading this in the original uh, would understand the dual meaning of that Chinese character. Uh, la di da. Uh, that is, those who fall down through reliance on the ground inevitably get up relying on the void. And those who fall down through reliance on the void inevitably get up by relying on the ground. Unless it is like this, this again being Inmo, getting up will in the end be impossible. The Buddhas and the patriarchs, or ancestors, uh, were like this. Suppose a person asks a question like this. Again, this is Inmo. How far apart are the void and the ground? If someone asks a question like this, Inmo, we should answer that person like this, Inmo. The void and ground are 108,000 miles apart. And, and the word he's translating as miles is actually D, which is a Chinese uh, way of measuring things, and it's a, like two point some miles, but anyway, miles is fine. When we fall down through reliance on the ground, we inevitably get up relying on the void. And if we seek to get up apart from the void, it will be impossible at last. When we fall down through reliance on the void, we inevitably get up by relying on the ground, and if we seek to get up apart from the ground, it will be impossible at last. Someone who has never spoken such words has never known and has never seen the dimensions of the ground and the void in Buddhism. Boy. That's a lot of words, Dogen. So, in my book, It Came From Beyond Zen, the... Um, the sort of uh, impression, impression somewhere? the interpretation that I uh, came up with is getting up on the ground, or getting up relying on the ground, is becoming enlightened by becoming familiar with delusion. So there is the enlightened state and deluded state, and they're, they're sort of uh, considered to be two separate things in most people's telling. Uh, Dogen doesn't say this. He says that uh, becoming uh, aware of delusion is how we become enlightened. So getting up on the ground by using the ground. So we, we use the ground of our delusion to get up uh, on into the, uh, the getting up of enlightenment. Uh, I don't know. That's, that's a weird way of saying it, but something like that. That's one way to look at it, and as Dogen points out, pretty strongly that is a perfectly valid way to look at it but then he has this weird thing where he says getting up off the ground by re relying on the sky or on the void that is also interesting now what he means by this I don't think I can presume to say I can only say what I get from reading it and what I get from reading it is something like this. You have to hold both sides in order to have a, a full understanding. And this idea is related to the idea in the Heart Sutra of form is emptiness, emptiness is form. Emptiness being also ku, that same word that he uses for sky. Uh, form in this case is uh, shiki, which is also the, the character for color. I don't know, but it's not the character for ground. But anyway, it's a similar metaphor 
and they're just using different words to say the same thing, which is that an understanding also of emptiness is necessary for an understanding, uh, a full understanding of, of the Buddhist way. This is crazy stuff, you know, this is stuff that when I read it, I get a certain kind of real, you know, feeling from it. And it, it has a kind of meaning to it that transcends any attempt at explaining it. And, and I feel like every time you explain it, it kind of goes wonky. And sometimes these things just need to be left as is, which I know sounds like a cop-out. It sounds like, oh, well, Brad, you don't know what it means. That's why you're saying just leave it as it is. You know, you know that's part of it. I don't know how to explain it, but I, I, can, I can feel a feeling from it that, that the understanding of emptiness is also necessary and the understanding of form is necessary. This is, this is again, another way that Buddhists have of saying we don't escape from form into emptiness. You know, we don't, we don't escape the mundane into the enlightened. The enlightened and the mundane are one and the same. So it kind of relates back to an experience I believe I've said in videos before where I had this sort of uh, confused message from my first teacher. I'd uh, I had this uh, this uh, person who was in my life who was telling my teacher things that I'd said and done, and uh, it came back to me that this person had talked about enlightenment, and Tim had said, oh, Brad will never get enlightened. And I heard that back and went, oh, I'll never get enlightened. But I was still committed to this Buddhist thing, and I thought, well... You know, I'd read a bit of Dogen by then, I, I kind of knew the deal, and I said, well, I'm not going to try to be enlightened then, I'm going to try to fully understand what being unenlightened is. Ziggy's going nuts over there or something, I don't know what it is, maybe I should take it away from him. Uh, anyway, what are you getting at, Ziggy? And, and now, he's, now he's not. Okay, anyhow, um, by trying to understand your delusion fully, that is what enlightenment is about. So so you're not sitting on your cushion, for example, doing zazen, trying to, f to find this other state. You're actually trying to become very, very close with the state that you already have, uh, unadulterated and not exchanged for some other thing. And that is the main message uh, that, that Buddhism pours in over and over and over. So that's what I can say about that. I hope I didn't... Uh, there's uh, Ziggy... Hope I didn't take anything away from Dave's uh, talk about Inmo later on, and probably everybody will forget about it by the time he talks about it anyhow, or they won't remember this video. So, if you want to donate to me, you can donate by sending uh, money to me through Patreon and PayPal, and if you want to find my Patreon and PayPal links, there's a URL on the screen that is showing you where to go for them, or if you're on YouTube, you can just go down below the YouTube, and in the video description, there are the links right there. So, uh, thank you a lot. That is the, my only way of making money this, this year, and I really appreciate those of you who are donating. If you're having financial trouble, don't worry about me because everything's sort of, you know, hanging in there because other people are donating and so that's great. And I think Ziggy's still going nuts over something over there. I better check on what it was. Uh, see you later. Have a good time all the time. Bye.